the reason why I'm, I'm, I'm speaking about that is because I wasn't sure like it would be a, a fucking strong revolution. But when we dropped this thing, it, it sold out like in a day. And I was like, okay, I know that I'm going to create this company this now. This is called traction. And the day before, <laughs> the day after it was sold out, I created Renaissance. Blockchain, crypto, NFTs, DeFi, Metaverse, Web3 is literally eating the world and community builders are the new leaders. Hi everyone, I'm Bilal El Alami, co-founder of Pirates Lab, a startup studio fully dedicated to Web3 startups. In Pirates Land, I'll give the mic to Web3 builders, founders and investors so that we can deep dive with them into what is truly about Web3 entrepreneurship. No conventional bullshit, only creativity, rebellion, and community-driven insight. Go. Hello there. It's Friday, and we are with Adrian Oanesian, co-founder and CEO of Renaissance. Renaissance is a very interesting company working with brands and trying to democratize access to NFTs and Web3 for, for those. Um, hey, Adrian, thank you for accepting my podcast. How are you doing today? Very good, and you? It's a Fine. pleasure to be with you, Bilal, as always. Likewise, likewise. Thank you for those kind words. So, like I told you a little bit before preparing this uh, this podcast, the idea is not necessarily to talk only about Renaissance, but also to, to talk about you. What interests me is more about the um, uh, intellectual journey that you had and your experiences and how they led to this specific moment. But uh, let's start with the beginning. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and where did you grow up? What have you been doing when you were a kid? Hmm. Um, so uh, I'm Adrian. I was born in Lyon. Um, I have three brothers and sisters, so I was part of a, of a uh, quite a big family in Lyon. Um, I don't know. I grew up quietly. Uh, I don't know, doing what kids do, uh, sports, friends, uh, um, and and there was a lot of music at the house, like my, my, my father was playing a lot of piano, my brother had a band, um, and this is important for what's coming next, um, because I think I chose uh, my, my, my first job because of that, I, I decided to work uh, in the music industry when I was 20. Nice. Um, yeah, yeah. So I, I know. Doing... I know. Lyon was the home of uh, Les Nuits Sonores, this amazing festival with most of our generation grew up. It's a very cultural city. Yeah, yeah. Good um, vibes between the south of France and Paris. Yeah. Well, I, I think uh, it's true that Lyon was a, a good, like, uh, a cultural city. But also, um, I was born in '85, and and I don't know when I was 15. It was like this rock wave. Like we're all listening to rock music <laughs> and it's very different from Les Nuits Sonores or, true, true, true. <laughs> uh, or what I'm listening today. But um, um, it was like, a, yeah, quite a cool uh, music scene, also a local scene. And um, so we were a lot like, I don't know, hanging with bands. And actually, when I studied um, one of the uh, one of the year of study I've done was in New York City. And this is... Uh, I remember an important moment uh, of my life there. Please share it. <laughs> um, well, there was many, but uh, there is one like professional one. Um, I was at th this job fair in New York City. So it was um, uh, a lot of banks. Uh, everyone goes to New York to you know, work uh, in, in the banking industry. And um, there was Morgan Stanley, Booth, um, all these like, um, you know, big uh, banks. Big banks. <laughs> And, and all the students were like uh, queuing, like there were 30, 50 of them uh, queuing. And I was like, wow, are you like, uh, are you going to be one of them? And then there was uh, the MTV booth. Okay. It was empty. <laughs> and I just show up at the MTV booth and, and I got an internship there in, in five minutes. Nice. <laughs> yeah. And I thought, yeah, I don't know. Um, the culture was important um, in my professional life. And, and at the time, like MTV was still like very shiny, you know, it was like a big brand, a big name. Pimp my, pimp my ride. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and, you know, they, they, in their way, like they, re, they, they, they were part of the music revolution, like putting like uh, uh, video Definitely. clips on TV and stuff. 
So um, yeah, I think that's that, a very that interesting time, thing. I, so I decided like between Morgan Stanley yeah. and, and music <laughs> industry or I don't know culture. Uh, I, I choose like not to be one of these hundred people. Of course. I don't know if I was good enough to be one of them, but I knew that in the other way that um, I had like, uh, 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 I don't know. More uh, opportunities. Yeah, for me, like uh, as like yeah, uh, as my personality. Of course. Yeah. No, 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 I totally agree. It's interesting to see this uh, anti-conformism trying to go where people are not. Yeah. And I think that's the basic of, of curiosity. You mentioned your father and your brother who, who kind of inspired you in this music and cultural area. Um, is there another person when you were young, like below 21, who really inspired you to get into um, music or whatever else? For example, in, on my side, it was my uncle. So my uncle, he used to take me golfing every weekend and he was an engineer, whereas my parents were doctors. And I ended up doing science and engineering instead of going to med school because he was one of my inspiring figures in my childhood. Mm. Is there someone like that close to you or an uncle or godfather who kind of took you under his hood? No, not really. Um, not really. Like, um, who would you say is the, your biggest mentor? I don't know. It's hard to say. Like, um, I think... I would say my father, in a way, uh, he, he, he was like a hard worker, he's an entrepreneur. Um, uh, he lost his father when he was really young, so he kind of took the responsibility for everything very young. And he went straight, like straight away, like uh, uh, built a company and worked hard. And, and I think this is what we learned at home, like uh, work hard and this is how you get yeah. <laughs> success. Definitely, um, <laughs> there's no secret. <laughs> except so he was like the the methodology, and then we had like uh, I don't know, like I said, like three brothers and sister, like a family of four. There is a lot of things happening. My my sister was more into art. My younger brother was like uh, uh, one of the first graphic designer when we discovered computer at home. Okay. Um, we were like creating YouTube videos at home, like for fun. I don't know. You, you know, it was like the beginning of like what was possible to to do uh, at home. What was and that was not possible to create like I don't know ten years before. And that was like uh, there was already a lot of yeah, creativity. I would say. Uh, using tech tools and this nice. is like two two important things uh, in my life all right all right all right so before we get into into renaissance can you tell us a little bit what what you've done before and how this lets you to to renaissance yeah sure so and what is renaissance if you can define it with your own words so um i think uh, um, uh, The reason why I created Renaissance was uh, so I worked a lot. I worked uh, 14 years in the music industry. I worked uh, at uh, um, Because Music, which is an independent label, um, one of the coolest one that ever existed in France. Um, I worked uh, after that. I worked like five, six years for Believe Digital. Believe Digital is like a big, like uh, um, French company, uh, tech uh, company that uh, re like when iTunes and, and when the music had to be like uh, online and, and was consumed uh, on the internet, they decided to be like the tech company that would uh, be the intermediary be between the uh, artists, the labels and the consumers. So um, it was like a, a big like uh, part of my life because I think I, I arrived at the, in this company when it was only like 20 or 30 people. And when I left, we were already 500. So I, I kind of saw like the possibility we stack like to grow a big company and in France, you know, you don't have Just to go to, to, I don't know, uh, uh, Silicon Valley or I don't know, even London or, you know, where kind of like exciting places for me at the time. I didn't want to work in Paris, like in my life, I, I didn't feel like I had to work in France. But in the end, working at Believe, like it made me realize, like uh, with a smart brain and teams, like you can do a lot of things. Definitely. And um, <clears throat> so it was like the revolution of um, streaming. Like uh, Spotify was there, Deezer was there, um, and um, and before that, uh, it was the rise of the social networks, and it gave a lot of new opportunities for artists, you know, to do something different, like to work something different, like 
very a new way that had been done like the previous like I don't know 20 years that were like um, uh, you, in order to be successful like you didn't have to only do music but you had to do I don't know be on the radio uh, play on the TV uh, do some shows and then came like a lot of new tools for artists like social media and streaming and so the the, the role of, of the label and the people around the artist had like t totally changed <clears throat> So, um, so yeah, it was like a, a big revolution time for music industry. And I was like right in the middle of it because I think Billy was one of the most innovative company at the time. And, and because of that, I was hired by Universal at a great job at the innovation, um, in the innovation team. And so it was like a step further because it, it meant like, the revolution you believe in is accepted by like the big major company and we were kind of the enemy at the time when we were working at Believe because we, we were like believing the music would be digital like 100% when the big like major company were not really into it at the time but it was growing growing every year and then I was hired by Universal at a job like and I had like the whole streaming uh, strategy uh, uh, under my responsibility so it was a big responsibility nice. one of my biggest job and it was like six exciting years there uh, of building innovating creating tools for artists like to <clears throat> um, uh, be able to promote their music distribute it um, but also thinking of where what was the new way um, to expose the music like it was not like the radio or the tv it was like I don't Play know, on demand. Uh, Instagram, TikTok, a lot of new things, you know, where you had to be present. You had to think about how the what can we create for the artist to be su successful there. And so, yeah, I think that it was like six important years of my life because um, while well, I arrived uh, in a team of three, we, we ended up like uh, I ended up managing like 15 people, uh, three different uh, teams. Um, so it was exciting reporting to the CEO like every Monday we had like this big like two hours innovation meeting with the whole like uh, company board and we had to present what we had thought during the week what we had done so yeah it was like um, kind of cool uh, and I'm, 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 I'm getting there but um, I, I believe that uh, at the time that streaming and, and social networks and were like the biggest opportunity for artists uh, but actually, um, um, when I left Universal Music, there was like already like uh, um, a lot of concern about uh, how much would the artists actually make in this new industry, and uh, we actually put a lot of like more work for them instead of creativity, like social net, like dealing with I don't know Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, uh, dealing with Spotify, Deezer, Apple Music, and. It was exciting, but it actually didn't end up like being like the most successful revolution for creators. It was a good revolution for users. Like we never like listened like as as much music uh, ever before. Uh, there were more artists, but also they were making less money. And I think when I realized uh, that Web three, NFT um, existed, actually. Um, it would be the first like digital revolution that would actually protect the artist. So this is the whole motivation of me creating this company is how can these new tools like be useful for creators? And this is what I believe in. And I think this is why smart contracts are, are cool is because the, 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 the piece, like whether it's an, an art piece, like a collectible or, or, or music is protected. Uh, and, and I, and it's true today, but it's created by the own creator. So there is no intermediary that is taking all the value. So I saw very early the shift from Web three, from Web two to Web three. Web two were like new, like new tools, but they didn't like they they didn't empower the artist. They gave us they gave them new opportunities, but they didn't make them richer. And I think Web three would be a, a better world, like more fair for them. And actually, the ones that are going to work hard there uh, are going to be very successful. And I hope they're going to make a lot of money. And I think this is my motivation is uh, and this is actually the 
when I created Renaissance, I went to see one of one independent artist, very famous in France, that is called Jack. Um, and I told him like, this is Web3, man. This is what you can do today. And and we we created this crazy project where um, he sold his music rights uh, as NFTs to his fan base. So before the song was even released, he made I don't know forty thousand euros or fifty thousand euros by se only selling his rights. So it's a very different new way like to create or to sell. And actually, it was very successful. And the funny thing of this case, and, and actually um, the reason why I'm, I'm, I'm speaking about that is because I wasn't sure that like, it would be a, a fucking strong revolution. But when we dropped this thing, it, it sold out like in a day. And I was like, okay. I know that I'm going to create this company this now. This is called traction. And the day before, the day after it was sold out, I created Renaissance. I made a deal with my partner, like, this is what we're going to do. We're going to help creators, um, um, empower give artists, them, give them uh, the right tools, create the tools that they need because mm -hmm. it's a tech revolution. So it's kind of complicated uh, for them to use or for them to understand. And we're going to help them and take them by the hand. And this is uh, what you can do. And, and so I guess uh, this is Renaissance. This is how we can help creators, artists, brands step in Web3 with the right strategy and the right tech tools. So we, we both like a creative company and a tech company today. So very good vision. Thank you for, for, for sharing that, uh, Adrian. <laughs> I, I, yeah, it was very clear and uh, it makes a lot of sense. So, uh, <clears throat> So you were talking about uh, yeah, so empowering artists to to control their their their, their work, mm -hmm. but also maybe their community, yeah. or not necessarily to control, but have a better visibility on their community, have a better better uh, contact with uh, with them. Mm -hmm. um, how do you handle this community part with the various artists and brands that you work with, and um, how the fan receive these new proposals? Uh, Overall, overall speaking, because it's not because you've sold uh, in one day Jack's NFT that all Jack's fans agrees with what, what he's doing or understand what he's doing. Yeah, it's true. Um, so How is it received? For example, in gaming, I know it's very hard for traditional gamer to understand the revolution of play and own, play to earn or blockchain games. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, know. I was with a game creator yesterday and he doesn't want to hear about it. It's um, hard. How can you, how do you cross that chasm? So I think there are um, two important aspects. Uh, artists are not making uh, enough money, but also a lot of fans are willing to pay for uh, something. Like fans, they're like what we learn in the industry is like, I don't know, uh, reward, uh, um, like, I don't, uh, it's hard to say it, but it's like, I don't know, 1,000 fans are, are 1,000 of your fans can pay 1,000 euro in a year because they love you in, in music, in shows, in merchandising, maybe NFTs. So this is 1 million euro, 1,000 by 1,000. Mm. And not every artist is making 1, 000, 1, 1 million euros of revenue every year. So um, I think when we were uh, working with Jack and also all the brands, we worked a lot upfront with them to make sure that their communication and the communication they're going to release is understandable by Web3 uh, geek and, 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 and friendly uh, users, uh, but also by their own fans. So uh, first of all, the, the, we try to make like the easiest way to buy. So we, we work with like uh, tech solutions to, um, I don't know, uh, a, a year and a half ago, it was not possible to, to pay with a credit card, but today it's very easy to buy an NFT with a credit card. This is new things like, um, so it makes the, the, the User journey, uh, the, the user, user journey very easier um, um, and and so um, so yeah I think um, I've done a lot of marketing and strategy in my in my in my previous life and I think it's very useful that I have this actually uh, uh, in my bag today because um, we define like uh, targets and we, we we make with brands and, 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 and artists like a communication plan dedicated to this user so you always have like a Web3 friendly communication and you always have like a, a fan communication and, and, and try to be, um, I don't know, we try to make the artist or the brand take the responsibility of 
explaining what they are doing. I think if the brand or the artist is not able to explain why he's doing it, it's not going to work. So we try to work with only only with people who uh, have um, I don't know, a true willingness to go in Web three and not like just uh, enjoy the wave. An opportunity uh, approach, yeah. Yeah, and 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 I think now, like after a year and a half of talking with like I don't know the whole like <laughs> brand ecosystem, I'm very sharp today to see who has good intention and who does not, and and when we feel like that the intention or the project. Uh, um, I don't know is suitable for like Web3 then we go because we want to like we want to really like create something new like new experiences new tech and we think like the adoption is very early so it's also our responsibility to make sure that we don't lose fans or uh, disappoint any um, but it's true uh, in another way that I don't think uh, today it's a revolution for everyone, so maybe we don't speak to every fan, but it's okay. Like uh, it was the same with streaming. To... So yeah, well it was the same at the time, but today it's like of course, we all yeah. have Spotify on our phone. So, uh, but it was the same 15 years ago. Um, it's true. So this is exactly how I feel. I feel like it's uh, um, a very strong revolution. I think we're very early. So let's make great experiences, like let's create cool cases and this is where we're going to be successful. Like we, I want people to say what they've done with this artist, what, what they've done with this brand is really cool. It makes yeah. sense, yeah. And, and I would only tr like for the two years, like, uh, I don't know, two years coming, I would try to only make project that actually I would buy. This is how I, 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 I work today. Okay, cool. Very... Uh... You're making good points here. <laughs> I'm trying. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> let's uh, let's get to our next um, next chapter, um, which I call the founder track. The idea is more to understand uh, you around your entrepreneurial journey. Um, you've been an employee so far until Renaissance, right? Yeah. So can you give us? Um, your feedback on this transition mm -hmm. what did you find hard as a founder and as a web3 founder um many things were, were hard um a year and a half when i created renaissance uh, a lot of people were, didn't understand what i was doing so it was kind of me being sure that it was strong but the rest of the world didn't understand it so Either you're stupid or either you're a genius. <laughs> I still don't know, uh, but but um, but the time is proving that. Uh, well, you have a history of uh, being ahead of the trends, so I will give you the benefits of, uh, the benefits yeah, of the yeah, doubt. Yeah, but I, I think it's part of my life, like, uh, and this is what I was doing, I, like, uh, my whole life, either as a user or or in my professional life, I was trying to understand what tech revolution would be uh, uh, adopted and and. And this one felt like more dangerous, more scary, uh, but also more exciting. And, and I was like, I'm not going to miss this one. I need to be part of it. And so first of all, I was uh, driven by, by uh, I don't know, uh, a true passion. Like this would change the world and, and change the creative world. And a lot of people are going to step in. I knew that we were early and, and, and so I knew it would be hard and long. But um, I don't know, we met so many people believing the same thing we were believing in that, you know, it kind of felt good. Like, so I feel like the, the, the uh, good like things were like meeting new people, like uh, being part of a Web3 uh, um, um, ecosystem, revolution, and ecosystem. Yeah. meeting you, Bilal, was uh, uh, one of them, but uh, they are also... I don't know. I'm, I'm like we, we were yesterday at the, the sandbox party. Like everyone there uh, yesterday are like friends, you know, sure. today, and and it feels good to be uh, among them. And, 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 and I love those crypto parties because you have like people, investment bankers from Rothschild and yeah. hackers in the same yeah. place. Yeah, I love that. It's crazy, right? <laughs> and and the only common denominator is um, their empathy and the way and their curiosity for innovation. So yeah, exactly. And and we all like. I don't know, in the same boat. And, and, and so I think uh, the hard part is, uh, is uh, building something. Is, is, it takes a lot of time. Um, um, uh, building like um, um, 
the foundation of my company like I, I'm very glad like I was not alone like I have a partner is the CEO of, my, of the company uh, this is important um, but I, I, I knew that it was a hard um, tech revolution like uh, not the one we knew before like it was not like just going on Google and, and oh it's cool we can do search on the web like everyone could do that not everyone can buy crypto or have a secured wallet or stuff like that and 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 enhanced by nft um so yet. sorry yet no no yet yeah it's true but but it's 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 uh the hard part is uh um uh, are you like uh crazy like uh doing a company there or or um is it gonna be like uh something that will be adopted by the mass and and so i understood like one thing i didn't want to be like an agency I didn't want to sell uh, advices to to uh, the, the the company we were working with or the artist. I wanted to build the tech for them, and this is important. Uh, and this is why I have this partner, and it's a strong foundation we have together. And this is also something I guess is 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 a hard part. Uh, my partner, I I told him blockchain is going to be a big revolution. You are you're the best dev I, I know in the world, and we've been working for five years together. Like he was doing all my devs at Universal Music. I, when I, there was like new thing to try on streaming, I was like, "Can you try something? Dig there." And so I told him like, "Check check Ethereum, check Tezos, like check uh, uh, the smart contract aspect." And a, a week after that, he said, "I can do this." this is <laughs> and 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 so I like okay, let's build this company together. And and this is something that is important. It's because we were early. We had to understand the tech tools. I don't want to use like tech tools from someone who built it in 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 San Francisco or something. We wanted to show that it was possible to do it, and we wanted to hand these tools to the brands or the the creators or the artists and tell them this is a simple thing. Like when you have the right tools, you're gonna use it easily because we build them for them for you. So this is why we are both a creative company and a tech company. We're building the tools, and this is a very important aspect of the company. And 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 so uh, coming back to the to the question, like um, um, there are many hard aspects, and I think uh, yeah, time also is a is a hard aspect. Like mm. uh, how long is it going to take? Like uh, where do I want to go? Like what what is the limit of my work? Like um, um, we speaking to. Uh, we were lucky to be honest. Like we worked in a year with um, the biggest brands in in luxury. Uh, we worked with Dom Perignon. We worked with Evian. I was like, wow, we're working with the coolest brand in France. Like uh, I just created this company. I don't know the luxury industry, <laughs> but because I know the Web three industry, then everyone you're being you're being very captive, and and this is what is also exciting, but also uh, hard because. You have this, the responsibility for them. Like you don't want them to fail. The the web. You don't want. You want them to believe that Web three is a long term uh, revolution. So bringing them there uh, on the long run, I think, is the hard part today. And 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 yeah, I think that's it. I see. What would you describe as um, re well retrospectively? Is there something when you were launching your company that you would you would have done differently today yeah well i'm thinking what was your first uh, mistake? every day you're thinking about that um i think my mistake was not to be able to be faster at the beginning because okay. we were so early but it was so risky i i wanted to prove with time that i was right but i think if i had like been able to build and hire people earlier then I would be uh, stronger today. But also it, would, it was very risky. So maybe just being reasonable is my mistake. Uh, I, I didn't want to rush. Um, I didn't want to staff. Uh, but you feel you had this little voice in your head saying, go, 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 and you didn't listen to it or what? Yeah, yeah, I didn't listen to it. I, remember, man, a year and a half ago, you were speaking about Web3 or NFT in, in I think the in, word in, Web3 in didn't dinner. exist at that time. It didn't exist, yeah. You were <laughs> so speaking, crypto so, or blockchain? Yeah, crypto, blockchain and NFT. You, you were speaking about that at a dinner and people were like, oh, what the fuck is that? And I told <laughs> I, I was saying them, now you know what the word is, you're going to see it everywhere. Because it's just like, I don't know, you, you're browsing like internet or news and stuff. You see a world that you don't understand, you, you're not even reading the news when you know that the world is there, it was everywhere already, you know, it was just like people were not paying attention to it. 
And um, so I guess, yeah, because of the uh, environment that was, but also, you know, it's a good, um, um, I don't know, like you need to feel the ground. Like if you believe like uh, um, everyone is going to step in a revolution, you have to speak about it. Like uh, see with my, I don't know, like my wife is not yet like understanding what I'm doing. <laughs> like uh, beside the art part of the creative part, the tech part, she doesn't want to hear about it. No. Uh, and, and, and so... I think that's a hard part. Like, uh, do you? Um, I mean, is it going to be a long-term revolution? I, am I sh was I sure about that a year and a half ago? No, I, w I was sure it was exciting and there was a lot of things to do, uh, but I wasn't sure it would be uh, so strong. And, and but also, I think um, people they they are too much biased on on the tech part for most of them. But the truth is that, like we say, nobody knows how the iPhone works. Nobody asks you if your website is hosted on AWS or Google Cloud. Mm -hmm. And um, and yeah, we just need to focus on the value proposition yeah, and, and yeah. the vision that you think this technology can bring. And I think this is definitely more convincing than going into smart contract layers for... for, for yeah, yeah, but you need to understand the layers uh, if you want to be able to speak simply about it. You need to understand the, yeah, yeah, definitely. You know, and, and, and... But it can be explained with easier, easy concepts. Yeah, yeah, it's true. But at the time, it was complicated. Yeah, true, is, true, true. And, and so, yeah, I think uh, the hard part was that, like... Um, and, and yesterday, I had this discussion, actually, it's funny, with, uh, with uh, Agoria, um, one of the artists we, we are working with, uh, and that is being very, very successful. Um, uh, in the NFT uh, scene and art scene and um, he was saying uh, this is what we all do at individuals uh, that is making this revolution real and actually th th this is funny you know because it's because you're part of it it exists <laughs> yeah it's fun right yeah. so he, he told me like you shouldn't think like maybe it's not going to exist like 10 years uh, in, in 10 years Think about what you're doing now, and because you're doing it now, it's going to exist in ten years. Yeah. So it's a totally different way to see <laughs> I love things, that right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah true. No, but he's 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 definitely right. Yeah. He's definitely the same right. for you, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, we'll see. Um, <laughs> is there any like daily routines that you have except uh, drinking tea? <laughs> so actually, I didn't have any, and. Um, <clears throat> and I regret it a lot. Mm. Um, and I speak about it a lot uh, recently. I, I think I don't think I was able to speak about it before, but I had a hard summer, like uh, almost burnout. Like and 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 uh, oh, this past year was hard. <laughs> yeah, it was really hard, too intense. Like and and I think because I didn't have a routine, uh, I accepted many meetings that were not useful. Um, um, I was working from home before I had an office. I think I made a lot of mistakes. This is like stupid mistakes. Like, uh, uh, like working from home. Like when you create a company, like you need to uh, <laughs> define where work is and 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 where home is. I have a, a wife. I have two kids, um, so I have to, to spend a lot of time with with them. And you need to keep energy for them. And and I think uh, personally, I, I I went all in in the Web three, like hundred fifty percent of myself during a year and a half without breathing and this is something you shouldn't do like you should like uh, step away sometimes when it's family time when it's weekend but i don't know it was so um uh, there, there was, was so much inertia like yeah. we were dragged into it yeah we were dragged into it <laughs> and 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 now um so i spent a lot of time thinking about the mistakes i've done this summer and i think routine is the biggest mistake so for example i have a new routine i'm doing yoga <laughs> so uh because you were 15 minutes late today i had time to do my <laughs> yoga session and and this is i think very simple thing you can do um where you actually focus on yourself what you're feeling inside and you know accept like the whole environment like uh take time to uh accept all the information you you, you get and and you know um and you and, re and keep the the one you want to keep, and then and and, and uh, take away the one that are not useful. So but I was late because I was doing my yoga too. Really? <laughs> like every morning, I do like two three minutes of yoga when I wake up in my bed. No. Like I have small moves that really wakes me up. Ah, so. that's cool. Yeah, you should try this app like Asana Rebel. It's my new my new thing. 
Um, but this is something important that I didn't realize before. Like, uh, make sure you, you listen to your internal voice. Mm. Make sure you take time to uh, digest. Um, you know, like you can do 10 meetings in a day. Sometimes you uh, uh, go to bed, do 10 new meetings. You didn't have time to, I don't know, think about the meeting you had yesterday. And I think it's important to sometimes like stop, take time to breath, think uh, where you need to focus. And this is like the big mistake I've done because it kind of feel bad. Like uh, when I realized that I was uh, completely empty in energy and, and I don't know, I, I, I slept for two weeks uh, this <laughs> summer. So, uh, you know, I, I, I thought of that uh, really a lot as well. Um, it, it, well, I'm, I'm a bit younger than you, and, mm -hmm. and, and, and so I didn't quite realize those because I don't have a family, I don't have a kid, so um, I was just working a lot. And my friends, they were saying, hey, Bilal, what's your personal life? How was you doing? Where do you work <laughs> so much, etc." And they're like, oh, you know, it's bad for your equilibrium. That's the word that they were using. And mm -hmm. then I was thinking about it, thinking about it, thinking about it. I didn't have any right answer for them, but at some point I said, but wait, I'm not unhappy with what I'm doing. Mm? So I'm not looking for equilibrium. I'm looking for harmony with myself. And yeah, it's true. From that point of view, I was like, okay, then um, I don't have to listen what what they're saying because I'm listening to myself. I feel great. I like what I'm doing. I feel I have an impact. So let's do it. And when I don't feel I have an impact and I'm not doing great, um, I will think more of this equilibrium. But so far, I'm, I'm, I'm... It's because you're younger, man. Yeah, 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 I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. And, uh, and I should grow up a little bit. No, no, <laughs> I mean, you have time. Like, I'm not saying you should grow up. I'm, I'm saying when you have, like, uh, kids at home, it's uh, very different because yeah. you uh, need to, uh, when, you, when you're done with your work day, you need to think about what they're going to eat, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, play with them, uh, and, um, I don't know, be, be, be there with them. Yeah, of and, course. Ha and having a good moment without, like, checking your phone and, and without, like... Uh, uh, being in a rush to do something or or even like uh, your mind like being busy with uh, 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 thinking of the day or, or something that's going to come up in the next days and and this is for me the toughest part and actually uh, because I was in this uh, state of mind I, I, I spoke to like my brother is an entrepreneur he's, he's built a very successful company and we spent a lot of time this summer speaking about his routine he has so many men yeah, he's like a, a, um, a maniac uh, of routines. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. He doesn't accept meetings. Uh, 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 he takes like uh, uh, three hours uh, during the week uh, to, to be with his wife. Um, like on Friday, it's lunch with his wife. I don't know. It's, it's maybe simple stuff like that uh, are, are very easy to... If you, if you have your routine and you, have, you, you lead your agenda, I think you're going to be in harmony. And this is what I haven't done sure. and that I sh I'm, I'm trying to do uh, th this year. And, and this sure. is a good advice for everyone who is creating a company. Definitely. And I had this discussion yesterday with um, um, a, a very, um, maybe the biggest entrepreneur that I know. Uh, his name is uh, Jean-Charles Samuelian. He built uh, uh, Alan, the, the, the yeah. um, French, new, uh, French insurance unicorn. Yeah. yeah. He's a, a very inspiring person. He, he wrote a book about his routine. His agenda, I was like, wow, who does that? Like, it's crazy. Like, Give us yeah. an example of a couple of things. Well, uh, his whole week is planned. Okay. It's there on the schedule. Like, if you want to, uh, he, 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 he takes uh, his reading time, his plan, his uh, answering t uh, email time, his plan on an agenda. Um, so this is a very simple routine, but um, it's it. Like he told me, like an entrepreneur without routine is not an entrepreneur. Yesterday, mm. told me that. I was like, okay, I really need to do that. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'm asking the question. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but he has a book. He wrote a book about about, okay. about it, and, oh. and it's very useful. And 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 I think he's a very inspiring entrepreneur that everyone should know and and read his book because uh, it's uh, it's inspiring. So you don't have to be him. Like you don't have to be a unicorn to. Uh, think about your routine but I think uh, in a way you need to take what is useful for you and adapt it to your personality or your, your way of living and this is already a good uh, beginning so I was going to ask you to recommend a book but uh, here's one book you, you've recommended um, is there any like Twitter accounts that you like to follow for Eve whether it's technological art or 
Mm, well, um, I think uh, one of the best like Web three media for me is uh, De Decrypt. Yeah. Um, it's 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 really uh, probably know, one of the most mainstream. Yeah, mainstream, but also like they don't miss any big news, and it's very detailed. Like you know, sometimes I feel like. They, like I was saying, like there was so many information to get like during the last year that you don't like sometimes you just see the, the headlines and you're like, oh, OK, they've done that. But you don't realize what they've done. Like if you uh, read the whole thing, you're like, ah, OK, this is different than what I expected. This is uh, you, you got subtlety. So I think it's important. Uh, Maybe it's something I haven't done right. Like instead of reading like, I don't know, 10 news uh, very deeply, I was reading 100 news, not deeply. And I think this is also uh, a, a matter of focus. But instead of being aware of everything, partially, it's better to know, I don't know, a couple of cases by heart that you've studied and you understand that you understood the details. Mm. And I think this is where you learned most because, you, yeah, again, it's a strong revolution and we need to... Uh, understand the dependencies the, yeah. and uh, so I would say Decrypt uh, is a great media and, and actually the, the stepping into art which is cool because uh, uh, artists are very inspiring and and, and I don't know like uh, sorry to mentioning but uh, Agoria is also very inspiring in in his way like the way he uh, uh, shares uh, his thoughts about this revolution how an artist should be what an artist should not be stuff like that are very inspiring so I would say um, um, it's like people that are inspiring me today, not media. But um, and uh, I don't know, the community is strong, and 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 just like Twitter is very uh, useful for me. I spend a lot of time on Twitter. I don't know two <laughs> hours a day, uh, and I learned a lot there. Yeah, definitely. I, 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 it took me like so long. It's probably the last social network I, I used, but now I'm almost using only Twitter. It's very strong for for Eve to follow news yeah. um, and there are a lot of inspiring people that share their, their insights as well. That's, that's true. Do you have any prediction for, for this year? What do you think is going to happen? Well, uh, I, the, I see what what's is, happening. What's the next trend? Um, it's hard to say. Uh, I'm, I'm very happy that uh, we had a bad crypto market. Uh, uh, not, not for my personal uh, account. But um, I think um, it kind of makes the environment much uh, healthier. Um, I think a year ago, like brands were coming to us and be like, how can we make money and, and be part of this uh, Ethereum growing up uh, uh, revolution? But it was not, they were not seeing the right thing. Like we kind of mixed up crypto and NFT and, and use case uh, last year. And this year, the discussion I have with, with brands are very about um, building a product, building long-term relationship. They're not doing one shot anymore. They're not here just for the fun. They, they're here for real. So m my prediction for the next six months is uh, having healthy relationship with consumers and, and with like uh, uh, brands is, is, well, sorry, I didn't say it right, but Having a healthy environment is very good for my company and, for, and because I think, um, um, yeah, we know where to go. The brands, like, they know where they want to go now. They are understanding more and more why they are doing yeah, that exactly. as well. And this is important. I, I think a year and a half ago, they didn't know why they were doing NFT instead of just being there. Uh, and now they really understand it. And not... This is very good for us because what we're doing is more appropriate to uh, an NFT and use case uh, market than a crypto market. Yeah, yeah definitely. And uh... so I don't know, I think art is a big part of the revolution. Again, I think uh, um, gaming and metaverse is a big revolution that is um, going to be good. Like we were mentioning Sandbox uh, earlier, um, but I don't know, we, we, we're doing this, uh, we, we're working with a luxury brand and we're going to do like a, um, an art exhibition on special for them. Um, nice. I, I, I love to a special. Yeah, yeah, it's really cool, and 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 it's much. Well, today it's easier to build something on special than building a land on sandbox. Like in terms of, first of all, in terms of money, like 
uh, but also in terms of time like it's it can be ready in a week yeah. or in two weeks and it's you multi device it works really well yeah and and so i guess um we will stop like uh believing in something new we will create the real case so <clears throat> i'm expecting to see a year of concrete use case we're going to measure what uh, was the impact for the brand what was the impact for the uh, customers but not in terms of how much they made like in terms of what have they created and i think we're switching the the kpis which is good for us because we have always built some like real experiences like where we try to make the customers or fans happy and not i don't want them to be disappointed because when they bought an nft it didn't grow up by 500 you know uh, multiple so this is not nft like the, the it's speculation and nft is a very different thing like they are like a part of the NFT that where you can speculate, but it's a gambling game and it's one game. But 99% of the market is not that, and this is a 99% I believe in. So I'm, I'm, yeah, we're not gonna change anything for us. And maybe the big news will be the merge. Um, um, and and uh, technically, I, I I understand the move, uh, but I cannot explain it. But I guess uh, this is the biggest move. Like will Ethereum be the mainstream blockchain is we're going to define that this year because we work with a lot of brands on, on Tezos or Polygon because they didn't want to uh, use Ethereum because of, of uh, environ, environ, uh, sorry, uh, environment issue. And, and maybe the discussion will be, well, Ethereum is in the end the, the good blockchain and it's the most like the, the most mainstream. So I, I guess this is what I don't know. And, mm. and for me, it doesn't. It's not a big issue, but it's a, a concern. And because now people are asking us, like, uh, after the merge, will will Ethereum be a good blockchain for us? Seriously, I don't know. I hope, guys. But there are alternatives. So you do, if you don't want to use it, we mm. can use. If we can use it. Honestly, I'm, I'm on my side. I'm very critical about this this merge because um, well, it's been like four years that we are waiting for it. Um, there was no very very much transparency on on the roadmap but this being said um i think the historical user of ethereum proof of work they want to stay on ethereum proof of work yeah um they want to stay there because like in reality 90 percent of the value of ethereum comes from uh bots of arbitrage mm -hmm. and miners selling their maximum extractable value and kind of this works only on proof of work, uh, mm -hmm. not on proof of stake. So um, I think there will be a, a, a huge part of the community still being there, uh, mostly the traders and the, the, the financial aspects. Yeah, you're right. And probably the more sane use cases that are more retail consumer will go on proof of stake okay. blockchains. Yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm, like my take is that the Ethereum community gonna, is going to be split. Uh, very very soon well and in this case for me it's not a big issue again and mm. and because um i don't believe in what blockchain uh, in one blockchain i yeah. believe in the use of blockchain as a new like uh, uh, way to create experience and, and whether it's there or or in another one it, it's not really my my concern and also it's important like to to mention like centralization uh, was the big issue of web two mm. web two this is uh, actually a revolution I'm trying to step away from. And this is actually the revolution that made the artist not rich. Uh, <laughs> so I, I, from the beginning, I knew that it would be a, like they, they will probably not be a major actor um, leading the whole industry or it's the same for blockchain. So maybe they're going to be like, amazing use case on tezos maybe they're going to be amazing use case on on ethereum maybe they're going to be amazing use case on polygon and this is fine for me let's finish with um with one last question uh might be a little bit tricky but um if you if you mind sharing what are your personal objective for for this year uh, being, being healthy yeah is an important one a new one um, I don't know. To be honest, uh, I, I would I would be very happy uh, that I was discussing that with a friend yesterday. That I I, I only uh, I, I I keep the same way of uh, accepting clients. Like I really want to create new thing 
uh, with NFT, with Web3, with Metaverse. I, and I really want to uh, try to create the best experience. This is what is exciting about this revolution. There is no standard today. A lot of people are doing NFT different way. And so creativity on top of the tech is an important aspect. So I want to try to keep this... Um, uh, the, 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 the experiences or, or the, the project I launch, I want to be proud of them. This is very important. I want to keep the same passion and I will try to keep the same passion. And sometimes you're driven by, by money, but sometimes you're driven by the passion. And I think it's a cultural revolution as well. And, 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 and so I'm going to try to keep the passion, uh, Please. Uh, be the first uh, KPI in my mind. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you, Adrian, for, for sharing that. I... I really like this podcast. It was a very, very interesting talk. Yeah. Um, thanks for, for sharing your, um, your, your inspiring people and, 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 and your intellectual journey until, until today. Um, thank you everyone for listening. Uh, if you want to join our community, check our Discord. Uh, we have some, of, some amazing people in there uh, who are in the community and who support each other. So it's kind of a safe place for Web3 founders and, and builders. Feel free to join and, and participate. Um, and this podcast is a production of Pirates Lab and we'll catch up in the next session thank you everyone thank you Pirates Lab thank you Bilal that was cool thanks for listening to this episode if you want to join our community check our discord link in the show notes we have some amazing people in there who are in the community who support each other it's a safe space for web3 builders if you want to gather there too this podcast is a production of Pirates Lab we'll catch you in the next session